Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing he uh, antithrombin-3 and heparin. Okay, right. So we are now discussing the structure of heparan sulfate, which is a polysaccharide which is on the surface of endothelial cells, to which the antithrombin-3, which is created in the liver, uh, can bind and become activated, and it can then inhibit uh, thrombin uh, 9A, 10A, uh, 11A, and 12A, and stop the coagulation process from happening within a healthy blood vessel. Okay, so I have described to you uh, the fact that um, heparan sulfate is what's known as a glycosaminoglycan. And glycosaminoglycans basically consist of a polymer of disaccharides. So they have two sugars um, bound to one another, and that's what's known as a disaccharide. Okay, so this is a disaccharide. Now, I want to describe to you six of the main disaccharides which are used within glycosaminoglycans, and I suppose I should write that down somewhere. So glycosaminoglycan is any polymer which is basically consists of a um, polysaccharide formed from this polymer of disaccharides, and there's a certain six uh, disaccharides which are used over and over again in glycosaminoglycans. Okay, and both Heparan sulfate and heparin are both glycosaminoglycans. However, the difference between them is that they have different compositions, basically. So which uh, disaccharides they use most is different between the two, basically. So they are fundamentally different uh, polysaccharides, although they're both made of the same disaccharide subunits, just in different amounts, basically. So let's now discuss, without further ado, let's discuss the uh, main uh, disaccharides which make up glycosaminoglycans. Okay, so, number one, we're the six of them, basically. Now, the first one, in this first position, so I'll put, label this as position one and this is position two. In position one, what it's going to have is glucuronic acid, and glucuronic acid, its abbreviation is GLCA. So remember what glucuronic acid is. If I get my picture, we drew it earlier. So it's this structure here. So there are these two optoquismers of it. We don't mind which optoquismer you're putting in. Uh, the point is that you have this um, carboxylic acid group coming off uh, the fifth carbon, basically. And this is, um, this is the sixth carbon. The carbon that's involved in the carboxylic acid group is the sixth carbon of uh, the glucuronic acid. And the uh, abbreviation for glucuronic acid is G for glu for this G here, L for the L here, and then C for the glucose there, and then A for acid. So GLCA is the abbreviation for glucuronic acid. So in position one, you put glucuronic acid, and then in position two, remember where I told you you usually put an amino sugar. So I'll just put the general rule. The general rule is that in Position two, you put an amino sugar, okay, and in position one, you put a uronic acid or galactose, but none of the disaccharides we see are going to have galactose in position one. Okay, so you have glucuronic acid in position one, and then the amino sugar that you're going to have is glucose, GLC, and then N acetyl. So this is the abbreviation for N-acetylglucosamine. Now you may well see another abbreviation used for N-acetylglucosamine. N-acetylglucosamine is often abbreviated to NAG, specifically when you're looking at things like uh, peptidoglycan, where N-acetylglucosamine is extremely important. You'll hear it just abbreviated to NAG. Now that's confusing and that's unhelpful, the reason being that if you look at N-acetylgalactosamine, it would have those same initials. So it's better to use this abbreviation here to have GLC, which means glucose, and then N-acetyl there. So this is the N, this is the acetyl. So basically what you've done is you've got glucose, so this alcohol group's going into the board away from us, and then in this position off this second carbon, you've got an amino group, which has then got an acetyl group bound to it. So that's what you've made in this to, uh, to produce this disaccharide, and you've linked the two together via a glycosidic bond, i.e. 
that you form the condensation reaction between two of these sugars, okay? So, um, on the um, right-hand side of one sugar, so let's take our, for instance, our glucuronic acid. In fact, we'll draw this out. We'll draw this out. So here's one of our um, disaccharides here. Okay, right. So, um, we'll take our we'll take our glucuronic acid first. So let's draw our six-membered ring here. So here's our oxygen down here, and then here's the rest of the six-membered ring. Right, and the important thing about glucuronic acid is that you've got this carboxylic acid group up here. Okay, there's that carbon, the carbonyl group there, and the alcohol group off here. Okay, then um, this is based on glucose, so this alcohol group in this position is going into the board away from us. The alcohol group on this position uh, free here is going out of the board at us. Okay, and the alcohol group in position 2 is going into the board away from us. And now, the alcohol group in here is debatable as to whether it's the alpha or the beta isomer. I think we'll choose the beta isomer, so we'll have it coming out at us, but there's no particular reason that I've chosen that. So here's the oxygen, and now what's going to happen, in fact, I'll leave it as the alcohol group for now, and I'll show the reaction actually happening. So then, in this neighbouring position, what we'll have is another six-membered ring here, Again, with these five carbons and this single oxygen up here. Okay, and then this again is based on glucose, so the alcohol group will come into the board away from us. Okay, and then all of these alcohol groups, they'll be fine. Okay, so this alcohol group is coming up, out towards us. Then we've got an amino group coming down here. And this amino group then has the acetyl group bound to it. So here is the carbonyl group, and then I'll also put this methyl group, and I'll have to put it side along like that just to get it to fit onto the paper. And I'm sorry, you can't see this. Okay, right. Now, then, um, again, we can choose our isomer. I'll just have it coming out of the board again to keep things nice and simple. So we'll choose the beta isomer of N-acetyl glucosamine. Okay, and then this carbon up here, the sixth carbon of this ring comes out of the board and then has an alcohol group coming off it. Okay, so basically what we'll do is we'll bring this one slightly above this one in reality because we need these two alcohol groups to be nearby and since one's going into the board away f into the page away from us and one's coming out at us, we'll have to bring this one slightly above that one. Then what we'll do is we'll perform what's known as a condensation reaction. We'll take a hydrogen off one and an alcohol group off the other. Okay. We'll bind this hydrogen to this alcohol group to get a water molecule. Okay, so H2O, and that's why it's called a condensation reaction because we are producing condensation basically or water. Okay. Um, so then what we'll do is we'll link this oxygen off this first carbon of the glucuronic acid to this carbon, the fourth carbon of the N-acetyl glucosamine. And that bond that was formed by this condensation reaction, that's what's known as a glycosidic bond. Okay? Right, and this is a condensation reaction. Okay, so that's how you form this disaccharide. And then when you're going to link the disaccharides to one another, imagine taking another one of these and putting it neighbouring to this one, you can then perform another glycosidic bond on this side, and of course you can perform a glycosidic bond on this side, so that's how you'll link disaccharides together to make a polysaccharide. Okay, so one of these most important um, um, disaccharides which are used in glycosaminoglycans is this glucuronic acid bound to the N-acetyl glucosamine. Now, we'll go through the other uh, five now. Okay, I won't draw them all out like I did that one because it will take too long. Okay, so the second one then. Again, in position one, you have another one of these glucuronic acid molecules. So glucuronic acid is in position one, and then uh, what's known as gluc NS is in position two. So what is gluc NS? So gluc NS means N sulfated glucosamine. So remember we talked about you uh, could have 
um, either the acetyl group off the amino group to make N-acetyl glucosamine, or you could stick a sulfate group off the uh, nitrogen of the amino group, and that would create N-sulfated glucosamine. Uh, that's what you've got in this case. So the abbreviation for N-sulfated glucosamine is to have GLC and then NS. Okay, so this is another common uh, disaccharide used in glycosaminoglycans. The third one then. The third one, we change it up, we mess it up a bit. We have IDO-A, which is short for iduronic acid, uh, and then bound to the iduronic acid, you'll then have another one of these um, N-sulfated glucosamines. Okay, so gluc-NS. Okay, so let's just have a reminder of what iduronic acid was. So iduronic acid was very similar to glucuronic acid, except that the carboxylic acid group of this fifth carbon went into the page rather than coming out of the board or out of the page at us. Okay, so you have an iduronic acid functioning as your uronic acid sugar, and then as your amino sugar you then have this N-sulfated uh, glucosamine here. Okay, so that's your third uh, disaccharide. Now it's going to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, so we're going to look at ones that I actually haven't shown you the structure of, but which we can easily deduce what the structure of is. So we're going to have Ido A, okay, hydronic acid, but then you put 2S here. So what does that mean? That means 2O sulfated hydronic acid. So this is in full is 2O sulfated hydronic acid. And let me explain how you can create 2O sulfated hydronic acid. Okay, so you take your hydronic acid molecule, okay, which we'll go back over the page to have a look at. So here's our hydronic acid molecule. Here's our second carbon with its alcohol group off. What we will do is take the hydrogen off that alcohol group and bind a sulfate group to it, one of these. And we'll then have 2O sulfated hydronic acid because the it's been sulfated, it's had a sulfate group added to it, and it's added it on onto an oxygen, which is where the O comes from, and that oxygen was the second of the second carbon, basically. So that's what Ido A2S means. Okay, and it's now bound to something that we know, thankfully. So it's bound to uh, N sulfated glucosamine again. Okay, so, fifth disaccharide that's important in glycosaminoglycans is Ido-A, so hydronic acid again, okay, but this time bound to something more complicated. This one gets very complicated. Glyc-NS, this is going to be the most complicated one we're going to see. 6S, so what does this mean? So what is this? This is 6O, this is basically a... a um, monosaccharide, a sugar, which has two sulfate groups. So it's 6O sulfated and then N sulfated glucosamine. So it's got one um, sulfate group coming off the um, N, the amino group of the glucosamine, and then it's also got another sulfate group coming off the, um, off the um, alcohol group off the sixth carbon of the glucosamine. Okay, so let's go back to our structure of glucosamine so that we can understand what we've done here. So here's our structure of glucosamine. Okay, so we're talking about glucosamine rather than galactosamine. So we've got the alcohol group going into the board, well, into the page away from us. Okay, now we've put an amino group on here, and that's sulfated. So that gives us N-sulfated glucosamine. What we're then going to do is go to this alcohol group off the sixth carbon up here, and we're going to take that hydrogen off and bind a sulfate group onto there, and that will give us 6O sulfated, N-sulfated glucosamine, which is this glyc ns 6 s Okay, so that's that fifth disaccharide there. And then finally, the sixth disaccharide, which is commonly used in glycosaminoglycans, is that you have Ido. 2S, uh, sorry, Ido A2S again, so you have 2O sulfated hydronic acid in the uronic acid position, and then you have another one of these uh, 6O sulfated uh, N sulfated glucosamines again, so glyc 
oh sorry, now I've put Gly, that's wrong. So Glyke, GLC, NS, and then 6S again. So that's an hydronic acid with a sulfate group coming off the second uh, alcohol group, and then uh, a glucosamine with a sulfate group coming off both the amino group on the second carbon and also off the alcohol group on the sixth carbon. Okay, so these are the six disaccharides which are generally used within glycosaminoglycans. Now this is not an exhaustive list of all the disaccharides which are used in glycosaminoglycans, but these are the six main ones. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these disaccharides and you're going to polymerize them together, and when you do that, you get what's known as a glycosaminoglycan. Now depending on how much of each um, disaccharide you use, you'll create a different glycosaminoglycan. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.